Hello, and welcome to this demo of URealize Network Insight for VMware SD-WAN. My name is Matt Just. I'm a Senior Technical Marketing Manager here at VMware, and I specialize in vRealize Network Insight and vRealize Network Insight Cloud. Now, it's important to point out that the integration for vRealize Network Insight and VMware SD-WAN was introduced back at VMworld 2019 in vRealize Network Insight 5.0. In this demo, I'm going to give you a high-level overview and also touch on some of the key new features that have been added to the integration with SD-WAN and vRealize Network Insight over the past few releases, including the latest release here at VMworld, vRealize Network Insight 6.0. Let's dive in. So clicking into the VMware SD-WAN dashboard within vRealize Network Insight, we get a wealth of information. We're going to get an overview of all types of events that are going on within our infrastructure, how things are deployed, the number of edges, the hubs, the gateways, the links that are connected to all of our edges, whether they're ISP links or MPLS or LTE. We're going to get detailed flow information all the way up to layer seven viewing to be able to see which applications are traversing our edges, along with a wealth of other information that will make it very easy to visualize your VMware SD-WAN deployment and to troubleshoot at the same time. As you can see here in the dashboard, we start off with an overview of a summary of our deployment. We also get a Google Map integration that allows us to see where our edges, hubs, and gateways are deployed across the world. You can simply zoom in and see where they're all placed. You can also see indicators on each edge or hub or gateway if there is a problem detected, and we can simply click right in and start doing some troubleshooting. There's a lot of great filters that are available if you want to filter down on specific applications that are traversing an edge, specific business categories that the edges are utilizing, focusing on different types of entities such as edges and hubs, or even focusing down by segment and profile. You also get a nice overview of the applications that are actually traversing the edges. So here we can see a long list of various applications that are being utilized by end users at our SD-WAN branches, such as Amazon. I can see that the category falls under is web, and we can see that we have a total of two edges that are actually have this application traversing with end users that are accessing it. If the application starts experiencing performance problems, we would see a red circle here indicating that it needs attention on the edge, and it's going to either show us all of the edges that it's impacting or the individual edge that it might be impacting. You also get a nice overview of edges by version, so you can see the various versions that are deployed and the number of edges and the build number. This comes in very handy when you're doing upgrades and you're keeping track of what edges you've upgraded to specific versions of VMware SD-WAN OS. You also get a full list of the events that are occurring within your infrastructure, full detailed list that you can click into that's going to open up and give you details as to what the event is, what is going on. So in this case, we got a video QoE degraded score, QoE referencing quality of experience, a 4.8 is less than the threshold value of 7 for the Velocloud tunnel at our Washington data center, utilizing the VMware ISP link on Gig Ethernet 3, connecting to Velocloud Gateway 2. We can launch into this and start doing diagnostics and troubleshooting to take a look and see what's going on. If we've already cleared this event and we've already looked at what's going on and investigated, we can simply come in and select archive, and this will let us archive the event to be able to also view it in the future if we want to reference a past event to see what was going on at that time. We also get a nice traffic distribution chart. You're going to see traffic distribution by applications, by edge, by the edge pairs, by flow path, the link policy, the traffic type, and also the route type. You'll notice that we associate each one of these with the number of flows and the sum of total flow traffic. Further down, we're also going to be able to monitor the availability of our edges. So here we can see which edges and hubs are online currently and which edges or hubs are offline. We also get to see what the uptime percentage is for each one of these locations. Now, one of the new features you'll see in vRealize Network Insight 6.0 is the new metric graph. This allows us to see different metrics around edge metrics, link metrics, and app metrics. You'll notice here that everything is now shifted from instead of using a bar graph is now using a line graph to give more detailed information and easy visibility into the data that we're focusing on. As you can see by default, I'm focusing on the total flow traffic. I can see the various edges and the total flow traffic at that specific time. You can also come in and change what metrics you want to focus on. You can see that there's a long list here of different metrics that you can focus on that will increase your visibility into your SD-WAN deployment and assist you on troubleshooting. You can also choose which entities you want to focus on, whether you want to focus on all entities or a specific branch location or hub location. You also have the ability to focus on the exact time that you want to look at data, whether it's over the last 24 hours, if you want to come in and set a custom preset to be able to look between specific date and time, you can absolutely do that. Now, you'll also notice over on the right that we have the option here to stack graphs 
or we can actually view it in a quad view. In the quad view or in the stack graph view, if you want to add additional graphs, you can simply just come over and click on add metric graph and then select what you want to focus on. So if I want to focus on specifically, let's say SD-WAN retransmitted packet ratio, I can do that. And now I can see my retransmitted packet ratio along with my total flow traffic that's traversing my edges. You can continue to add additional graphs to get the level of detail that you want to focus on within a single view. Another cool feature that's added within the metrics view is if I want to focus on a specific time, you can just simply click and drag across on that specific time range and it will now zoom in so that you can hover over and see the data specific that's going on in this case with SD-WAN retransmitted packets. Hitting reset takes you back to the original view. You can see all of this for link metrics and also application metrics. So this comes in very handy when you're doing visualization of your traffic, application traffic, and edge traffic and also troubleshooting. One last thing to call out, you'll also notice the new time range at the top. So this is adjustable where you can focus in on specific time ranges and zoom in on the data that you're viewing. You'll also notice these red ticks here in the timeline. As you hover over them, you're gonna see that they're actually events that are occurring within your infrastructure. So I can see that I had three critical events. By clicking into the view details, it's gonna open up a page and show me what those events were. In this case, I can see that they were video, QoE degradation, transactional QoE degradation, and also voice QoE degradation across specific tunnels. Next, let's jump into the Edge dashboard and take a look at what's new there. So here I can see the list of the edges that are deployed in my infrastructure. For this demo, we're gonna focus in on the Detroit branch. Now looking at the branch dashboard, in this case, the Detroit branch that we're focusing on, you're gonna see a lot of similar data that we saw on the Enterprise dashboard, which gave us an overview of our entire infrastructure. However, all the data on this dashboard is focusing specifically on this specific branch. But one of the new features that we've added is also the capability to view which business policies are applied to the edge, along with which business policies are in use and which business policies are not in use. To see this, you can just simply click on the number of business policies. And here we can see that we have 28 different business policies that are actually applied to our edge. We can focus in on the 14 in use if we want. And now we get a view of the various business policies that are currently in use by application flows that are traversing our edge. I can expand on these and I can see detailed information around the specific policy, in this case, the Hive policy, the profile, and detailed information around this specific policy and how it's configured. I can even take a step further and dive deeper by clicking on the actual business policy. Now it's gonna show me the definition match and the definition action that's taken place whenever a flow is utilizing this business policy. I can also see a detailed list of all the flows that are occurring for this specific business policy. When you expand on the flow record, you're going to see detailed information around the flow record, including the sum of the total flow traffic and the network traffic rate for this specific connection between an end user at the Detroit branch and the high video server over port 32400. You'll get all the source IP, the destination, IP, the destination port, protocol, and more detailed information, being that this is a VM sitting in our data center that an end user is accessing, we're also getting all of the VM information, which makes Realize Network Insight even more powerful and providing the end-to-end -end visibility troubleshooting from the data center to the branch or to the cloud. You're also going to see down here that we show the applied SD-WAN policies. So for this specific flow, I can see that the policy Hive is being used at the Detroit branch and has a traffic priority of high and link steering of round robin. I can also see that at the Washington data center, the policy being used for this flow is specifically web and the traffic priority is normal. Now, typically this would be a business policy mismatch. So in this case, I would wanna go into my Washington data center configuration and change it so that it's utilizing the proper policy, which in this case would be Hive, so that the traffic priority gets treated as expected. Now, going back to our Detroit branch edge dashboard, one of the things you'll notice is there's been some new enhancements also to the SD-WAN edge topology. You're also going to notice the new edge to edge tunnel topology. So here I can actually see the Detroit branch edge and I can hover over it and get information around the QOE or quality of experience for voice, video, and transaction. I can also see the tunnels formed to the VeloCloud Gateway 02, the VeloCloud Gateway 01, to my Hillsborough hub, and I can also see that I've got connections between my gateway and my Hillsborough hub to my Washington data center. Now you can highlight over any one of these tunnels and simply click view details to get detailed metrics on what the overall QOE experience looks like for this specific tunnel to this gateway over each one of the links that are connected to your edge. Further down, I can see my second link and its connection to the VeloCloud Gateway 02 
in all of the tunnel performance metrics that I'd want to focus in to understand how is the tunnel performing between each one of my ISP providers and the tunnel connection to VeloCloud Gateway O2. Also on the edge to edge tunnel topology, you can filter down on all tunnels, unhealthy tunnels, and healthy tunnels. So you can easily select and focus in on what you're looking for. Further down, you're going to notice the new flow visibility chart. In this chart, it gives us the capability of being able to select various different entities such as client IP, flow path, application, and destination edge. The overall chart is going to show us the actual edge that we're focusing on, which in this case is our Detroit branch, the number of flows that are actually occurring, and what path they're taking in this case. So we can also see the peer tunnel metrics. So here I can see the Hillsborough hub has two VeloCloud tunnels formed over the ISP links that are connected to our Detroit branch edge. I can see that I've got two tunnels to the VeloCloud Gateway 01 and two tunnels to VeloCloud Gateway 02. I can also click here to actually get a full detail page of the two connections for the various tunnels and see what the performance looks like for each one. Returning back to our Detroit Edge dashboard, further down, you're going to be able to see also the new feature of being able to see the link utilization by application and overall link utilization itself. So in this case, I can see the each SD-WAN application that's traversing the edge, the number of links it's utilizing, and the average utilization for that application across that links, which in this case is 0.2%. You will also notice, similar to the enterprise dashboard, that you get a full list of metrics that you can focus on, utilizing the new metrics graph that's part of vRealize Network Insights 6.0. Now, another feature that I want to showcase is looking specifically at applications and how we can actually see VMware SD-WAN by VeloCloud integrated into the application communications. Let's jump into applications. Here we can see a list of all the applications that we're monitoring in the infrastructure. For this demo, we're going to focus in on our Hive training application. Now, focusing on an application, it's important to be able to understand how our end users at our branches or at our work from home locations may be communicating with applications running in the data center. So here we can see our Hive training application. We can see that we have a front end of our application, which is our video tier running in our, in our data center in Washington behind vCenter. And we have our storage tier, which is running in AWS EC2. So this is a hybrid application. Here we have our Detroit branch, where we have end users connecting into the front end of our application at our data center. We also have our Rotterdam branch, where we also have end users connecting into the front end of our application in our data center. Let's focus in on the Detroit branch. We can see we have flows active between our end users at the Detroit branch and the front end of our application. I'm going to go ahead and click on the full line. And now we can see a list of the active flows currently between the Detroit branch to the video tier. And then we can also see that two of those flows are unprotected, meaning they've got no security applied to them from the NSX distributed firewall if you're running NSX in your environment. Now, I'm looking at the different flows, and I can see that I've got a large flow here at 15.1 gigs. So when I look at this, I can see that the server send point happens to be our high video server. I can see its IP address, and I can see that it's utilizing port 32400 for that communication. And I've got two flows, so we'll go ahead and click on the flows. Now we can see our flow record in full detail. As I expand upon this, I can see all of the information regarding total flow traffic and network traffic rate. I can see my source IP, my destination IP, my destination port, my protocol, the destination VM. And then I can also see things like the VLANs that are being traversed, the destination clusters that the VM that the end user is accessing lives in, what are the destination managers such as the vCenters or NSX managers, and I can also see things like the destination host that this VM actually lives on within the data center that the end user is accessing. If you have NSX in your environment, you're also going to be able to see any NSX firewall rules that may be applied to the specific flow record. But more importantly, again, you can see the applied SD-WAN policies. In this case, I can see the Hive policy that's applied at the Detroit branch, treating traffic at a high priority. And I can see the web policy applied at the Washington data center, treating traffic with a normal policy. Again, this would be a policy mismatch, business policy mismatch. So we'd want to go in and correct this within the VCO and align these both so that you're using the Hive policy so that we get equal high traffic priority for this application. Now, even going even further, if we click on the actual flow record itself, we can now see a full end-to-end -to -end topology from our end user at our Detroit branch connecting through the VeloCloud Edge. So I can see it's utilizing VLAN 1. I can see the VeloCloud Edge, I can click on it, and I can see detailed information specifically about this Edge, such as version that it's running, what model Edge, which gateways it's utilizing, and any events correlated to this specific Edge. 
We can then also see that this is going through a hub, so we can see which hub it's, it, that the path is going through. We can see it arriving in our Washington data center utilizing a VeloCloud Edge, the VLAN that is connected behind, which is VLAN 501. We can even see the physical network routing and switches that are in path between the end user and our uh, destination, which is uh, in this case going to be our high video server VM. We can see the physical NIC on the host. We can see the VLAN. And then if you're running NSX, you're going to be able to also see the overlays and the NSX routers, such as the tier zeros and the tier one routers. And then we can see our destination VM on our host, which are high video server. And we can also see any type of firewall that's in path. If you click on the firewall, you're going to be able to see all of the firewall rules that are applied in path between our end user and the destination VM, which is very powerful. You also get a detailed legend here on the right, which you can enable the labels to see a hop by hop analysis as it goes from the end user all the way to our destination, which is in our data center on our high video server virtual machine. Lastly, another powerful feature, if you want to focus on your ISPs that are connected to your branch locations, you can simply come into the search and type in ISP. You're going to see a list of your various ISPs that are being utilized across all of your branches, whether they're deployed in a single region or throughout the world. If I want to focus on a specific ISP, I can just simply click on that ISP. In this case, I'm going to click on Spectrum. Now we're going to see that this opens up and it's going to show us all the detailed information particular to this ISP, where it's being utilized, and how it's performing at each location. Now this specific ISP spectrum is only being utilized at our Detroit branch. But here I can see full analytics on the QoE experience for that link that's connected to that edge via spectrum. I can also see latency metrics such as jitter, upstream latency, downstream jitter, uh, downstream latency, a lot of important metrics when you're wanting to analyze how the performance of your ISP connection is performing and make sure that it's meeting the expected SLA. We can also see the packets that are traversing. So we can see how many packets we have traversing, if we have any packet loss uh, occurring on any of the links, the total packets, and so on. Further down, I can also see my application packets. So I can see that my Detroit branch using the Spectrum link connected to Gig Ethernet 3 for the Hive Media application, I can see that the various retransmitted packets, I can see replicated packets, and I can also see uh, on the transmit side and the receive side, and then I can also see my total packets. So as you can see, the integration with VMware SD-WAN and vRealize Network Insight is very powerful. Bringing in a wealth of metrics and data to help you visualize your SD-WAN deployment and troubleshoot your SD-WAN deployment, along with being able to receive detailed reporting and alerting via email, SNMP, or locally within the product. I hope you found this demo informative and thank you for watching.